Hey, how's it going? If you are one of my subscribers, and you probably know that I am an FL Studio user. In fact, I'm an FL Studio Power user, and it's been my DAW of choice for a very long time, and I've used it across many different applications. And if you are not a fan of FL Studio and you like a different DAW better, there's something you should know before you tell me that in the comments. Nobody f***ing cares. Very few things in the world are as puzzling to me as people being territorial or tribal about what tools they use to make music for free in their free time. <laughs> if you use GarageBand or Cakewalk 1.0, that's awesome. I'm so glad that you get to share the beautiful feeling that it is to make music. And I'm sure you understand the limitations of that program. And maybe if you don't, and if you're in denial, you'll figure it out on your own. I, it doesn't bother me either way. Speaking of limitations and speaking of FL Studio, I've always felt that the biggest downside to FL Studio has been the way that it communicates with MIDI controllers. And to be fair, ImageLine for a very long time has been trying to find different solutions for this. And some of those solutions do work for some people. For people who like the old step grid pattern interface, the Akai Fire is a pretty good solution. However, for a lot of other people, it does come with a whole lot of limitations. A few years ago, FL Studio updated allowing MIDI scripting, where you could write a Python script to work perfectly or seamlessly with whatever MIDI controller you plug into it. And this actually worked quite well for me, except that then I started a YouTube channel and I started plugging a whole bunch of things into FL Studio, and I'm not gonna write a Python script for each and every one. And to state the obvious, the average musician doesn't know Python, and they can go on the image line form and try and find a Python script for a MIDI controller that they do own, except that that is a bit of a stab in the dark and it still will be customized for the person who wrote the script. My point is, is that I love FL Studio as a DAW. I think it's extremely powerful. I think it's a tremendous value except that there's just this one pain point with MIDI controllers. And I don't usually do MIDI controller reviews or features on this channel, but when Novation told me that they were making one specifically for FL Studio, I was like, yup. They sent over the FL Key 37, which has 37 keys and 16 different pads. I don't wanna say it's lightweight, but it's not heavy at the same time. It feels pretty durable. It has a sustain in, a MIDI out, USB, and a Kensington lock in case you wanna chain it up with your bike. The keys feel pretty decent. The pitch and modulation wheels actually feel great. And the knobs are really hard to remove. There we go. There's a little LCD screen that tells you what's going on. The pads feel decent enough. They're no MPC or anything like that, but they feel fine. And I think the reason why I'm kind of going on and on about the hardware build is because I just can't really figure out how they got this to retail for $200. I'm just saying I've had quite a lot of MIDI controllers over the years, even some from Novation that felt cheaper, had less features and cost a lot more than $200. Now, supposedly I could just plug this into any Mac or PC running FL Studio and it will just work. So let's plug it in. <laughs> One last thing before we get started, I just want to show you what I am working with here in reality. And there's the laptop down there that's running FL Studio. However, it's half closed, so I cannot see the screen. I'm just monitoring what the camera's looking at here. And then all the audio is just going through a Focusrite Scarlett 4i4. I think it's a third generation. And then that's just being recorded into this little recorder down there. So while I'm not necessarily encouraging anybody to do this or try this, I really did want to try running FL Studio in a headless setup because when I perform live, I do not like screens. And I do kind of like the idea of running FL Studio on a small portable computer and just having a little interface. So here it is, the FL Key 37. And let's just dive right in. This is the overall navigation mode. We'll use that once I'm looking at a screen. But for now, let's just go through these instruments. And I've color labeled them to make it easier on myself. This should be a kick. It is. This should be a clap. It is. This should be a hi-hat. These are velocity sensitive, of course. This is a snare. And these are also playable here. And then this should be a 303. Yeah, and I have some of my own patterns on there or the FL Studios version of a 303, which I believe is called Transistor. I'm already making my job way more complicated than it needs to be because it tells me right here what I'm playing with. So this is channel six, Morphine. 
and then this will be SAR. So if I click shift and channel rack, we will just have everything laid out in front of us. So I'm just going to enable my metronome here and then I'm going to press record and we will record a beat with a count in. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna be honest with you, I did kind of intentionally do a bad job there because I wanna show you this. We could go to sequencer, turn off our kicks, turn off that clap. This awful hi-hat that I made. Let's just do like a boots and cats thing. This is just like the default drum kit template and the clap is atrocious. <laughs> Let's turn it up in pitch a bit. And naturally we could turn the velocity or volume down. Let's drop the pitch of this bass a little bit. And let's just fill in all the hi-hats. We could just make different pitches with the hi-hats, which I sometimes like to do. Just sounds a little more dynamic. And maybe this snare could be just a few semitones higher. Okay, now by clicking Shift and Plugin, we can actually scroll around our plugins and change some of these perimeters. So I'm gonna turn the cutoff down on the bass. The hi-hat, we can change the filter type to more of a high-pass filter. We could change where the sample starts. Now I kind of want the hi-hat to be further into my left ear here, so I'm gonna go to channel pan and move it over. Lovely. And... And now all of our transistor controls should be right here. All right, I'm gonna go down to morphine here. I'm gonna hit fixed chord, and I'm just gonna play a chord. And then we can do things like this. Sounds way too good. I'm pretty impressed. All of this has so far been done without a screen on headless FL Studio using the FL Key 37. But now I'm gonna open up that screen because I would like to make the song a little bit more dynamic. So I'm just gonna simply add another pattern. So I'm gonna click pattern two here and record. want to quantize it of course. So now if we want to I could also click plug in here and change some of the perimeters of the plugin such as the master attack. But I kind of like it the way it sounded. All right now I'm gonna go down to sawer. Oh this will be fun. All right, let's say I get a little bit too excited with my solo here and hit the wrong note. I can fix that by hitting scale here. That's automatically snapped into C minor, and now everything will be in C minor. 
Whereas if I turn that off, and like I mentioned earlier, we could hit shift plug in and then we have our most used controls mapped out right up here. So you could just go ham. Okay, I'm going to create yet another pattern here and it'll just be a little phrase. If I wanted to just make this transistor patch go absolutely crazy, I suppose that I could hit sequencer and give it a bunch of different patterns by just doing this. And this will just sound nuts. <laughs> and let's try it out. Wow. In my opinion, I think that the intended and well-executed purpose of this MIDI keyboard is for basic FL use, you will never have to use a mouse or computer keyboard unless you are actually typing something to name it. I think for advanced FL use, you will probably just never need to use your computer keyboard, but a mouse will be helpful for adjusting things like notes in a piano roll or something like that. By clicking this first menu button right up here, it brings us into navigation mode, and I believe that I have my playlist selected, so clicking enter, which would be right here, would maximize that. Or if I did something that brought up a dialog box, for example, like hit score log, and now it's gonna ask me, if I want to merge, replace, or cancel it, and I just want to cancel it, so select that, cancel. And so when you do combine this with your mouse, you actually do kind of get this elevated, efficient workflow that, as a FL Studio user, makes me wish they made an 88 key version. All right, so I am going to navigate down to Morphine here, and I'm gonna turn on Scale Mode, so everything will be, again, bound to C minor. And of course, we could change that scale to whatever we want. Now, if I hit shift and scale chord, we will have all of the buttons up here playing chords that are chromatically associated with the scale that we play. So you can't really play a wrong note. The FL key series has yet to be announced, much less released, so I don't have any manuals or customization software, so I've been doing a little bit of button mashing here and there to see if there's any features that I didn't already know about, and this one is actually cool. If you hold down scale and then move page, you can change the actual chords to things like ninths or six nine. I'm gonna turn the scale binding mode off here, and if we hit shift again and go to user chord, then we have a bunch of chords that I put in here. <laughs> it probably seems a little cheeky of me to program weird inversions of the giant steps chords into the user chord buttons, but there's actually a pretty decent reason for it. If you wanted to learn how to freestyle or improvise over that song, you can do so at your own speed. And if I want to delete my user chords, I hold down preset down and just click that and they're all gone. And if we want to add in new chords, it's as easy as holding the button and then pressing the keys that we want in the chord.
when you're in chord mode, these knobs up here will allow you to change the parameters of whatever synthesizer that you have open or active in the channel rack. Finally, if I press page here, it will just change the transposition of the chord. So if I press it two times, it'll go up by two semitones. And so now we are in D minor. Okay, so back into scale chord mode. If we hold down shift and hit scale, we could actually change our scale uh, so minor, major, Dorian, and so on. And then just by hitting our key, we could change the key. So if I want to be in D major pentatonic, we now have that. And of course, if you're in a scale like D major pentatonic, you don't really have that many options for advanced chords because, well, there's just not that many notes in the octave that are in the scale. My fundamentals as a musician are in jazz, so I've never been a big fan of binding to scales. However, whether it's intentional or not, I think that the way that this is mapped out and the way it works can actually be used for some educational purposes or for some experimentation. So for example, if I turn scale off here and then we go back to user chord, and if I hold this down and put in a, well, let me go down an octave. Okay, so now we have these two. So what I like about that user chord mode is that you can take a snapped in specific scale, but then have the chords drive it in radically different directions than it would normally sound from scale chord mode if that makes any sense at all. If we go back to channel rack and turn on note repeat, hit note repeat. If we want to change that note repeat, we could go to shift, note repeat, then, I don't know, one eighth, one thirty second, triplet. <laughs> so we could have like a triplet of a sixteenth, yeah, cool. And then, of course, we could tap the tempo from this as well. Finally, there's a lot of customization possible using the Innovation software. If I press shift, go to the custom button down here. It brings me these pads and I'm gonna have to go down to morphine to hear them play in the minor scale. Another custom mode here just has custom potentiometer settings up here so it could be mapped however you like to whatever plugin you like. If this is too big for you or if $200 is even too much money, I do believe that there is another version called the FL Key Mini that costs $109 and I know absolutely nothing else about it because it hasn't been released yet. Come to think of it, if you spent like $300 and then like maybe 20 bucks on just duct tape and glue, you could have this. Ooh, maybe they make little mail-to-mail -mail Kensington lock adapters and you could just be like and snap these in and you'll look like an FL Studio Pro. You'll also look like an asshole. Seriously though, guys, I am actually really happy that Novation made a keyboard and pad controller that just flawlessly works plug and play with FL Studio and gives beginners something approachable to use at a really low price. I guess that's it. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. If there's anything you want me to cover in the future, let me know in the comments. If you want access to a whole lot of unreleased music, ambisonic field recordings, audio assets, or a large Discord community with everything from songwriting challenges to game servers, then my Patreon is for you, and you can join for as little as a dollar. All right, take care. Bye.